High blood pressure, high cholesterol. I need to see what's going on with this patient. Every time a patient comes to see Dr. Faluso Fakarene, hey. it's potentially a matter of life and death. I need those labs. Can you draw how quickly can I get her results? I'm a heart and vascular specialist. What's that mean in layman's terms? Layman's terms is I'm a plumber that goes in and opens up blocked arteries in the heart and in the lower extremities. He's battling what he calls a growing epidemic of preventable amputations among black Americans. And too often, by the time patients like 54-year-old Jarrett Brown make it to his clinic, it's already too late. Brown had spent 30 years battling diabetes, and in recent months, her toes had become infected. Okay. You went to Greenwood? Yes. And what did the doctor say? He said, I've got cut foot off. I said, for what? You got a wound on your foot. Yeah. When he got infected, he cut them off. They just chopped it off? He just chopped it off. If anyone ever says they want to chop off your leg ever again, you call me first. You do not let anyone cut on you. You hear me? I got you covered. I got you covered. I'm going to do that. Dr. Facarete says he sees far too many patients like this, black Americans who suffer from high rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, and clogged arteries. As a result, wounds on their feet and legs don't heal and lead to infections. Regular breathing, regular breathing. When you're born, you're born with clean pipes. And when you start having certain behaviors, as you get older, guess what? It starts narrowing and you start developing plaque. But instead of undertaking efforts to restore blood flow, studies show that doctors disproportionately recommend that their black patients undergo amputations, a drastic, irreversible step. Good morning, how are you, Jeff? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining me. Talk about America in Black. It's uh, just I, I'm a news hound, so any any type of news program and and uh, it's just I, I think it's important, especially the younger generation, that we educate about news and journalism. And uh, what are some of the stories impacting and shaping Black America in this edition? Of course, well, we're really excited for this edition. We've got some remarkable. Uh, remarkable segments. Uh, you know, my colleague Nate does a really interesting sit down with Gabrielle Union. I was very jealous of him because I've been a Gabrielle Union fan since uh, since Bring It On uh, many many years ago. Uh, but I uh, I go down to Mississippi for what is a what a pretty a pretty serious story about what is called the Black Amputation Epidemic. Um, that Black Americans are more likely uh, to end up having to have amputations of their limbs, of their legs, of their arms, of their fingers, of their toes. And that, that a lot of this can be traced back to the fact that Black Americans are more likely to be living in places where they don't have access to health care, um, to not be receiving the type of screenings that would catch some of these vascular issues that are leading to, to blockages and then to infections. Um, and that when you go into a doctor and they choose, instead of doing preventative or reparative care to, to chop off a limb of yours, you not only have the devastating loss of part of your body, right, but the underlying issue doesn't get solved. The blockages doesn't get solved. And so what we know is that within a few years, many of the people, in fact, the majority of people who have a major amputation end up losing their lives. And so we went down to Mississippi to profile a doctor, a physician who's on the front lines of trying to battle and combat uh, this this epidemic of black amputations. So uh, assuming that, I mean, I, I saw that, I thought that was outrageous that, you know, amputations that I think of, you know, maybe in war or something like that, but who's cutting off limbs? So it, it leads to something maybe like diabetes and different healthcare issues like that, that's it's becoming extreme and and they, they're amputating limbs? Yeah, so what we're, what we're seeing is people are having vascular issues, right? blockages of, of arteries, difficulties in their bloodstream. And, and, and what ends up happening is uh, when your circulation um, is cut off in this way, you might get a cut or a bruise, uh, but it doesn't heal, right? That part of the body has not kind of been cut off from the, from the rest of the vascular system. And when it doesn't heal properly, uh, it ends up getting infected. And then that infection can spread, it can become an issue. And now suddenly you're walking in with an infected toe, an infected leg, an infected arm. Now, in so many cases, what we're seeing um, are cases where perhaps if you could go in and do an operation where you restore that circulation, where you clear out those arteries, that you may be able to solve that infection and save the limb. But in a lot of cases, we're seeing Americans walk in and a doctor at an emergency room is saying, all right, let's chop off this leg, let's chop off this arm, and never actually clearing out those, uh, those, uh, those arteries and whatnot. And what that ends up meaning is you've still got a massive 
it's a vascular issue. And so you might have a heart attack, you might have a stroke, you might have at the point at which you have such poor circulation or such such vascular issues that you are needing to have an amputation because of an infection, it means that something else might go wrong quickly as well. And so we know already with the health disparities in our nation that Black Americans are more likely to live in nutrition and healthcare deserts, right? More likely to have high blood pressure um, or diabetes, right? More likely to have comorbidities that might relate to some of these vascular issues, which means they're more likely to walk in with these types of infections. And then too often, instead of these type of restorative steps, we're seeing limbs chopped off, which again, devastating to lose your arm, to lose your leg, changes your life in your relationship with your body. But then also, if you don't solve that underlying issue, it's a time bomb. And Black storytelling is the mission of BET, along with the complexity of the Black experience. And this show uh, features human interests, celebrity profiles, investigations. What format appealed to you, especially your interest as a journalist? Of course. Well, look, I think that BET for a long time has been one of the leaders in allowing Black storytellers to tell Black stories. And I, I was really happy and excited uh, you know, it's been a conversation for a long time to do a show like American Black, and I was really glad that they decided to do it and brought it back. And then once they decided to do it, it I immediately knew this was something I wanted to be involved in. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's really important. I think that so often, right, we can only tell stories that we're capable of seeing ourselves, right? And that's not to say, like, if you can't see it, if we don't recognize it as a story, how are you going to tell it? That's not to say that only black storytellers can recognize and see and tell black stories. I don't I don't believe that, right? But I think it's important for us to create space for black storytellers to be telling these stories as well, to be telling our own stories, to be contextualizing them. Uh, because what's also true very often is when you can send a black storyteller to a place that you might be able to get more information or, or people more willing to, to talk with you because they see you in the story, right? You also have a very literal skin in the game. When I'm writing about these communities, this is not some dispatch from nowhere in this distant land. No, these are folks who could be my father, my aunt, my grandmother, my brothers. And, and and so I think that leads to an empathy and an understanding that I hope allows our, our, our journalism to stand apart. Is journalism is making a difference too, which I admire. Uh, we, we hope. That's the aim. And this is also a collaboration with CBS News as well? Of course, yeah, it's a it's a collaboration. Obviously, both BT and CBS News are, are a big part of the Paramount family, and so it's a collaboration across where we've seen talent, journalists, producers, cameramen, editors from kind of across properties bringing our collective efforts together to to tell some stories that again we think might not have been told or would have been told differently were it not for this program in this space. Well, Wesley, congratulations! I appreciate your time this morning, and uh, let's talk again soon. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. And, and you know, like I said, tune in on Sunday, 10 p.m., wherever you're watching on BT or Paramount Plus. Um, and definitely, you know, we want folks to let us know. Uh, we know that this is an issue. These amputations that don't just happen in Mississippi, they're happening in communities across the country. And so um, we, you know, we hope folks tune in, but also we hope they they let us know on social media or elsewhere about what their own experiences have been. And so, Jeff, thanks for helping us get the word out um, and looking forward to hear what you think. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Take care. Thank you.